A one-year ban on the fishing of cassala or camouflage grouper has been endorsed by the Tui Madhuata, Ratu Williame Katunivere. The ban, which started in February and runs till December 2017, is specifically targeted towards Ingolingoli Dokovata, which includes the traditional fishing grounds of Sasa, Madhuata, Nambekavu, Mali and Draketi. The ban is a device to allow the kasala to recover due to a drastic decline in its population from overfishing. I know a lot of people uh, uh, having kasala, but uh, you know, they age, they just have to adhere to one of the requirements, you know, banning of kasala. It's going to be a challenge, but we've done it last year, but the onus is on the fisheries here. The power is on the fisheries. Uh, I hope uh, they will uh, really, really do their job in observing this uh, ban of kasala. I hope that uh, the fisheries being the paramount player, the biggest player in this thing will really be ensure that the requirements in this fishing um, consent is adhered. With the ban comes the new licensing conditions for fishermen who fish within the waters of Ingolingo Lidokovata, a mechanism pieced together to ensure that fishermen follow requirements to allow the fisheries ministry to monitor the health of the fishery and its fish stock. With this new program and the new licensing that is about to come in, um, the proposal of SSP um, will be, this will be with us, while well, the concept will be actually with the treatment one sector. We will vet all the fishermen, checking for the data, um, checking for the compliance with MSA. Once we've done that, then we recommend to the model of the police concept. Work towards the ban was in response to a survey done by WWF Pacific's Coastal Fisheries Officer, Mr. Laitia Tamata, on the health of 20 commercial targeted species last year. We held an awareness workshop on the, the new concept and uh, we trained monitors on how to collect the data that could allow um, uh, them and us together with uh, the Ministry of Fisheries and the, the Golingoli Committee to have a, a view or a snapshot of the, the fishery in Golingoli Kokobat. The results showed that five particular species needed management and when the results came out we had another three consultations with the Golingoli Committees, with the fishermen of Golingoli Kokobat, with the Ministry of Fisheries, uh, uh, Lambasa Fisheries, and also with uh, Turanganatu Madhuwata. So after those three consultations, uh, uh, the communities of fishermen, they picked Kasala. The call to protect Kasala was further reiterated by WWF Pacific's representative, Mrs. Kasaya Tambunakawai. So the Kasala now in this Wadi is only reproducing at 11% of its ability of capacity. So it means that we've, we've already lost 89%. Yeah. So that 11% is actually linked to the size of the fish. Yeah? So it means a small fish. And what it means is a, a smaller fish will give a, a limited number of birds, <coughs> 200 or 300. Yeah? And out of that 200, 300, uh, the number that reaches maturity will be what percent? 50% or less? That's enough. So that is then what is available for us to catch for our Niti and Lolo, Niti and uh, Otto at a later time. So if we allow this cassava to grow from this size, which is allowing it to uh, use only 11% of its capacity, 200% in the in the one year, then we will probably have millions of young cassavas being reproduced. She urged members of the public to play their part in protecting natural habitats such as mangroves and coral reefs, which are homes and sources of food for the cassala and countless other marine species. We need to protect the seagrass because they need to feed there, we need to protect the reefs because that's, that's their home range. The project is funded through the NZ Aid and supported through the David and Lucille Packard Foundation, which aims at demonstrating effective governance and management approaches for inshore fisheries in Fiji through collaborative national and community-driven partnerships.